to a new thrift flip episode. Basically, in this series, I turn ugly thrifted clothing into slightly less ugly thrifted clothing through the magical power of my mediocre sewing skills. I get so many questions about how I find cool stuff at thrift stores, and while some of it is just me getting lucky and finding like the perfectly fitting, beautiful vintage dress or whatever, a lot of the times it comes down to me making small alterations to clothes so that they fit me well and they look a little bit more modern and less like grandma and more grandma chic. You know? So without further ado, I think I have some exciting stuff to transform for you guys today. So let's just hop right in to the video. <laughs> so our first fashion victim is this fabulous Oktoberfest meets Woodstock dress. I got this from a local thrift store for $15 and it reminds me of like if me and Sophia Nygaard's fashion styles had a baby. It has this crazy bat sleeve that I know Sophia loves, but it also has a little bit of gingham for my picnic bitch heart. I honestly already think this dress is so cool, but it is a little bit costumey for my everyday life. So I'm gonna make a couple small alterations today to turn this into a little bit more of like a Reformation inspired modern day picnic bitch dress. The first thing I'm gonna tackle are these crazy sleeves. Now I think on another type of dress, that was more subdued. These sleeves would actually be a really cool statement, but I feel like with all of the patchwork on the dress that already exists, having the patchwork sleeves as well makes it a little bit too loud for my taste. Farewell, beautiful sleeves. I shall see you in another life. After trimming off the bat sleeves, I hemmed my new shorter sleeves by folding the fabric up about a quarter inch, pinning it down like so, and then stitching all the way around to secure my hem. All right, so here is how the sleeves came out. Sleeves are like my greatest sewing fear. That and zippers, they're just so confusing to me. So, you know, at least they came out an even-ish length. You know, they're like eyebrows. They're not twins, they're loosely related sisters. To cover up my ever mediocre sewing, I decided to add a puff sleeve detail with this thin piece of elastic. I stretched the elastic around my arm to a tightness I was comfortable with, then cut two equal pieces of that length. Next, I pinned the elastic to the sleeve, making sure that the halfway point on the elastic matched up with the halfway point on the sleeve so it would be gathered evenly all the way around. With the dress inside out, I'm sewing a straight line across each elastic. The key is to stretch out the elastic as you sew, make a couple stitches, stretch out the elastic more, so that once the elastic contracts back to its non-stretched state, the sleeve fabric will look nice and gathered like so. To put the finishing touches on this dress, I am next going to address this bodice boob panel situation. I think this crossover design is a really cool concept, but I'm not a huge fan of this brown floral ribbon that they use. It feels a little bit arts and craftsy to me. So I'm snipping off the old ribbon and replacing it with this white frilly ribbon I got from Joanne. I like that the plain white was simple enough to not seem overwhelming, especially with gingham as the background, but the ruffles still gave it some dimension and texture. To attach the new ribbon, I sewed a simple straight stitch over each piece. Originally, I planned on keeping the gold buttons, but at this point I felt like the design was still too busy, so I removed them and saved them in my button stash for another project. And here's the finished dress! Its transformation from 20th century Oktoberfest to 19th century milkmaid is at last complete. <laughs> Jokes aside, as you might be able to tell by my excessive amount of twirling, I'm really happy with how it came out and it makes me feel like a Disney character. By the way, Disney, I am still available for the role of Mushu if you guys change your mind. Just, just putting that out there into the universe. <laughs> My next thrift flip is inspired by these cardigans that I've been seeing all over Instagram. I think they sell versions of them at Urban Outfitters for like $69. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're 21, Ashley, get a hold of yourself. I've also seen them at fancy boutiques for like $200, and I just, uh, this checks all the boxes for me. It is vintage inspired, it's cropped, it has detail, it has pearls, it has buttons. Mm. So I headed to my local Goodwill and I picked up this red knitted and Taylor cardigan for $7. I've honestly seen so many cardigans in this style at thrift stores. So if this is a thrift flip that you guys wanna recreate, I think it'll be pretty easy. So the first step in transforming this cardigan from your mom's wardrobe into your hipster ass wardrobe is to crop it. In order to crop something, I always start by trying on the piece and folding up the bottom to kind of envision what the new 
new crop silhouette will look like. Then once I have it in the perfect spot, I grab a safety pin and mark right where I want the new hem to end. From there, it's a simple 10 step process. First, fold over the old hem up to the safety pin, then pin it in place, then sew all the way around, then trim off the excess, then fold down the new hem, then realize it looks really awkward, then freak out and cut all of it off, then realize it looks even more awkward with a raw hem, then realize you never should have tried to crop it to begin with, and finally, do not forget this step, accept defeat, and realize that this is what your sweater looks like now, and we're just gonna move on with the tutorial and not talk about it. Anyways, now it is time to swap out these plain buttons for something more fancy. While I was filming my last video, I broke this beautiful pearl necklace that I thrifted, and like all of the beads are just falling off of it now. Luckily, after taking its driver's exam, this necklace did sign up to be an organ donor, so we are legally allowed to harvest its parts to revitalize another piece of clothing. You are a true hero, my son. On our cropped cardigan, I'm gonna be using some of, oh no, no. I'm gonna be replacing the kind of basic plasticky buttons with these little pearls that fell off my beautiful necklace. <laughs> Replacing the buttons was as easy as me freshman year of college. I simply snipped off the old ones and used some white thread to attach the pearls in their place. To add even more detail, I added some extra buttonholes in between each of the existing ones and reinforced the edges with this loopy stitch. Loopy stitch is definitely the official name for this technique, but basically we're securing the edge so it doesn't unravel. And my final step, of course, was to attach the corresponding pearls on the opposite side of the cardigan. And here is the finished product. The raw hem is admittedly a bit of an L, but if you just focus on the boobs up, I did a pretty okay job. Which is coincidentally also what God said when he made me. <laughs> just kidding, he honestly could have done a better job on the boobs upward too, like giving me more mental stability and less acne. But I'm working with what I got. You're doing great, honey. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Last up, I have this light blue dress that I picked up from the thrift store for $7. The reason I picked up this dress is I love this color. Right now I'm going through a big pastel phase. Pastel blue, pastel pink, pastel... I'm just naming pastel colors. You guys know what pastel colors are. I also thought the ruffles on the sleeves and the neckline were gorgeous and they added a nice kind of vintage girly touch to the dress. When I was thinking of how to transform this, the first thing I wanted to tackle is this very strange fit. It has this nearly foot long ruched waistline, especially because the dress is a bit big on me. It just isn't flattering at all. So like the nifty little lazy motherfucker that I am. Instead of trying to take in the sides of this dress and minimize the waistline and take up the hem, instead, I'm just gonna shimmy this dress upwards so the waistline becomes an empire, an empire boob line. The waistline is now on my boobs, if that makes sense. It's like an empire waistline Ariana Grande type silhouette. At least that's what I'm telling myself in my head, that I look like Ariana Grande and not an oversized toddler. Really, it's a fine line these days. Of course, in order to keep the dress held up around my boobs, I'm gonna have to tear out the top part of this dress and readjust it to accommodate my new neckline. Now, I wanna make this dress feel more modern by making an open neckline rather than a really close it up conservative one. And also, I just find it to be really flattering on my small boobs. So I'm thinking for the neckline, I'm gonna shimmy this fabric into my armpits <laughs> and create essentially this square, trapezoidal neckline. I think it's quite flattering because it leaves a lot of skin open, but it also maintains the original position of the sleeve and the shoulder seam, which is always really important when I'm thrift flipping because I have no idea how the hell to sew sleeves back into their sleeve holes. So whatever alterations I make, I always make sure that the sleeves stay in their original position. So now I'm just gonna pin this neckline into place with some safety pins. I'm using safety pins and not regular pins because they don't stab you when you take off your dress. Hence the name safety pin actually, because they are safer than regular pins. Oh, subscribe for more incredibly useless facts. Hello and welcome to this sexy, sexy close-up of my armpit. Basically what I'm doing here is tucking and folding away any excess fabric and securing it in place with a safety pin. Sorry my voiceover is really vague for this part, but I'm kind of just eyeballing it and improvising as I go. Next, I took off the dress and got to sewing. I opted for hand sewing rather than a machine because there were so many layers to keep track of, I figured I could use the extra control. I essentially just stitched what I had already pinned in place and then flipped the dress inside out and trimmed off this clusterfuck of extra fabric. Miraculously, after that very improvised sewing process, this dress came out super cute, if I may say so myself. I always do feel like we're doing these voiceovers because it's essentially just me jerking off myself and telling myself, like, good job, Ashley. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. That was very kind of you. Um, but anyways, I'm really proud of this one. I look ready to release some chart-topping singles and spend thousands of dollars on ponytail extensions. 
All right, and that is everything that I have for you guys today. I hope this inspires you, even if you have bad thrift stores around you, to give it a shot. Like, you can pick up an honestly really ugly piece of clothing and with a few simple alterations, turn it into something really cool. Also, just one of the coolest feelings is wearing something that you actually designed and sewed. It feels really special, so I hope you guys give it a shot. If not, I just hope you enjoyed watching me fool around with the sewing machine. No, no. <laughs> that would be a really painful fetish, actually. Let's not think any more about that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.